what are the challenges you're facing with your portfolio companies? Sure. Well, one of the things that we look to do at Canrock as a fund is, is take the entrepreneur's point of view because we are entrepreneurs uh, in a way that it's pretty rare to find in the VC community. We will start some of the businesses, and there's some of them, some of the VCs out there are doing like we are in the seed stage, but we get very, very, very involved. So one of the things that between me and my partners, we have the experience of being startup CEOs. So what we'll do at the start of a relationship with a new team leader for a startup is have a talk about our experience in building and running companies uh, and be very straight to say the skill set you need for the first 18 to 24 months uh, may not be the skill set that's needed for 24 months to 5 million in sales and then 5 million in sales and beyond. And what that does is it level sets to the startup leader and says there's no guarantee or don't think of this as you're the CEO forever and to be attached to that role or that title but be attached to the mission of the company and a drive to make it as big as possible and they have to make sure that they're incented with enough equity in the business that they really want to see it succeed. But I think what ends up happening and I think historically has happened with a lot of VCs is that when they put money into a business, uh, you know, a lot of VCs will say the same thing that they're pro-entrepreneur and they want to be supportive. But the fact is that there are these transition points where you may need to bring other, other leaders in, either to complement or to put on, on top in some cases. But what ends up happening, since that's a difficult conversation, it gets put off. And the longer that you put that off, um, then the CEO knows it, you know, the, the VC knows it, they're sort of avoiding this. And, uh, and it just it creates a, what I think, a, an avoidable dynamic, whereas that's something that we, we do straight at the start, start. So if, let's say, that startup CEO is able to mature and become, you know, run the company from a million to five million sales and beyond, they have a sense of an accomplishment beyond what they would have if they thought they were entitled to that, that spot, you know, forever. And um, on the flip side, if someone else is brought in, they don't have a, as crushing a sense of defeat because what's end up happening is the company is succeeding and they should feel terrific about that. So I think that that's one of the things that we do a little bit differently because we've, we've been in those shoes before.